Hi, hi everyone, it's Celeste, and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay. I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup, so you can become the character of your dreams. Today's cosplay is Shinobu Kocho from Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. But this is her maid cafe version. You can see the image here. In previous videos, I showed you how to do Nezuko's outfit and her little props for her mouth. So this tutorial, I'm actually showing you Shinobu's maid outfit which includes her neckerchief, her hair clip, her vest, her skirt, and her cute shoe bows. Look how cute these are. Oh my god, they're so cute. As a disclaimer, I have this wig and then I added purple extensions. Now, I'm not showing you how to do this because you can buy a wig that's specifically made for Shinobu or you can make your own, it's up to you. I am also using a pre-made shirt. I bought at H&M and I'm using thigh-high socks. She has like knee-high socks. It's As long as they're black, I think it works out. I don't have penny loafers for this specific cosplay, so I'm using black shoes instead. Feel free to use what works best for you. If you haven't done so already, make sure to click subscribe to become a member of my sewing pin cushion called YouTube and follow me on my cosplay journey. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. This is a very quick tutorial. I did use a few different patterns. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in a comment down below. So, now, tutorial time! In my previous video, you saw me make Nezuko's skirt using this pattern 2310 from Quick Sew. So I'm actually using the same pattern and any remnants that I cut off of Nezuko's skirt, I'm going to be using into Shinobu's skirt. I'm going to go ahead and serge the bottom hemline. This way it does not fray. Nezuko's skirt has this lace trim on it still. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the lace trim to the skirt again. Just a reminder, I used a zigzag stitch to sew it to the bottom hemline using a multi zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to flip over the lace and then completely clean up the hem. This is going to make sure that it's nice and secure and does not come out. I'm also using a white thread on top. I did a basting stitch to make sure the entire skirt is closed. So Shinobu's skirt actually has a pink trim at the bottom. I have this pink lace with a little bit of sequins and beading so I will be adding all of this to the bottom of my hemline. I think it'll be really cute if I add this on top of the white. So let's go ahead and start putting it on. Yes, slap it on there. Yeah, let's get it going. Now, like a dainty old lady, begin multi-stitching your lace on. Go ahead and go slow and make sure you get enough lace that covers your skirt. Turns out I didn't have enough. So I'm going to have extra skirt left over again. So instead, I'm going to actually turn it into a waistband. Yay. Yeah. Talk about cosplay recycling. I cut it all down the bias and then I stay stitched it. Now I'm serging it. Take your waistband and go ahead and pin it to the top of the skirt, making sure that it fits. Go ahead and grab a zipper. It's going insane at this bottom hem, which looks amazing now with the pink and the white. It's kind of fancy because of the little beads, but you know what? Insect pillar for the win. So she also has this same gold line like Nezuko. As you saw in the last video, I didn't have that much. So instead, I'm going to be using this trim. I'm not the insect pillar for nothing. It's going to look amazing. I shouldn't have cussed. So now that I've already cut off the excess of this, I went ahead and used a measuring tape and did one inch around, which is also two centimeters all the way around. And I am going to add the same white ribbon as Nezuko's. When I like to sew down ribbons, I like to go very slowly and I go to the edge of the ribbon first and then I sew down the side. This way the ribbon does not pucker and flip upward. Oh, now we're going back to the same pattern that we used for Nezuko and we're going to be using this bottom pattern which is C. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through all the pattern pieces and find C. So I found all the pieces. I'm going to lay it out on this nice black garbadine, the same fabric that I've been using, pin it, and then cut it out. This pattern is different from how I did my Nezuko pattern, and I messed up my Nezuko pattern, unfortunately. So I'm first going to basting stitch the collar pieces together. This way it will not shift around when I create the interfacing part to go on it. The vest pieces itself are the same as Nezuko's, but I messed up pinning Nezuko's properly, so this time I'm paying careful attention to where I'm pinning and how it's lining up. This way, I don't have to cut away any of the bottom. Now I'm just going to sew it all together following the pattern's instructions. 
Now I'm going to take out some nice interfacing and I'm going to iron it onto my collar piece. My collar piece, I want to make sure there's no dog hair on it because somehow there's always dog hair all over my patterns. I'm going to iron it flat, making sure that there's no wrinkles. This way it is perfect when I add the interfacing. When you're adding interfacing, you want to make sure that you have a cloth on top of it before you press it. This is because you don't want to burn the interfacing and you want it to adhere nicely to the fabric of choice. So I made sure to have a break in the lapel because I didn't want the interfacing to have a hard time flipping. Make sure to clip the edges and the curves of every point. This way it comes through nicely before you flip it inside out. So I already did that and now I'm flipping it inside out. After I flip it inside out, I'm going to press it, making sure the edges are very nice and clean, then sew it to the vest. With the lapel attached, all I needed to do was hem the entire vest and add buttonholes. Obviously, you already know how to hem, so I'm just going to leave that to you guys. I spaced out my vest to have three buttonholes. These buttons are actually going to be different from Nezuko's. It is white with gold trim instead of silver. Using a seam ripper, I'm going to open the buttonholes. I'm going to lay the new buttonholes on top of the other side and then mark it with pins. Using a hand needle and black thread, I'm going to sew the buttons in their respective places. One of the biggest things about sewing a button is after you sew it through the fabric a few times, wrap the string around it to help it secure it in place and then tie it off. Doing this will strengthen the button's integrity and not become compromised and fall off. So now for the bows and the necktie, I'm going to be using this nice white cotton. This is really good because it does not fray at the edges and it'll take paint very nicely. For the shoe bows, I decided to chest it out using a small scrap piece of material. I'm going to fold it into a one single knot bow and this way I can test out how long I want my actual bow pieces to be. One of the main reasons why I'm doing it this way versus the bow tutorial that I have on my channel is because I wanted one long straight bow piece versus three pieces. Now that I'm happy with the length and I know how wide I want it to be and I want it to be fluffy, I'm going to go ahead and measure out how big I want my bow piece to be. Test it out making the bow. This is 15 inches long with an 8 inch width. In centimeters that is... 21 by 39 and this is how it looks this is how big it gets as the bow when i do one single knot and i really like how this knot turned out so i have some water paints and my brush i'm first going to start off with black and then work my way from there make sure to have something underneath before you start painting i'm going to start painting the edge part of the bows and making sure I have a clear crisp line going all the way down on the edges on both sides. I'm doing about one and a half inches or a total of four centimeters across the bottom and I'm painting it pure black. There is no white spots on these parts. Now that both ends are covered in black, I'm going to drag my brush all the way across the band to create the insect lines. It is so okay if this is not perfect. You're going to have to cover this a few times anyways because the fabric takes in the paint so hard. And so this is just good for a general outline. I like doing this in squiggly motions and then I branch off to create some new strands. Make sure to repeat these steps to the other piece of fabric for the other bow. I cut out another long strip of the white cotton material to create my neckerchief. My neckerchief is about 8 inches by 26 inches long. At this point, you're going to actually need to make sure that you have little white spots onto the neckerchief. I created white outline spots using pencil on my fabric. I'm going to use the black paint and a very fine brush to slowly go around these little white spots, making sure that I don't paint them in. After you finish covering all of the black areas with the white spots, go ahead and start making the veins for the insect pattern all along your neckband. Make sure to do the other side and leave the little white spots open as well. I don't have pink paint, so I'm going to use that awesome method we learned in kindergarten called mixing paints. I'm going to use a lot of red and a lot of white to create pink. Now that I've created the color that I want and it's the right shade, I'm going to slightly put it above the black line where I started with the insect color. I'm going to dab it on lightly because I don't want it to be too hard and I want it to kind of gradient into the green color and coming up next. You'll be painting this six times, two for each side on each little bow and on the neckerchief. Don't worry about the black lines, we're going to go over it later. 
Now it's time to create the green color. The green color is actually kind of a bright green and I only have this dark forest green. What I'm going to do is dilute the green with some water and then add tons of white. I'm going to use this very sparingly as well and make sure that it goes on very lightly, kind of like watercolor. I'm going to go above the pink just ever so slightly and then try to blend it in naturally. This is going to be a little bit difficult and take your time because I wanted to blend into the pink but not get too far out for into the white either. It doesn't go too far but I'm going to make it gradient by slowly dry tapping it on on off. I cut a small rectangle and turned it into a tube of that white material that I used for the ties. And now I'm going to sew it together this way and then flip it right sides back out. This way it creates a nice tie for the neck. So this is what it looks like. I used black thread because I was too lazy to change it. I'm gonna cut off all these extra strings usually. All right, so now it looks like this little thing here. Flip it inside out and this is hopefully enough for the tie. Now I'm going to take my little shoe bows and turn them into single bow knots. I go ahead and wrap one with the bow piece and then pull it through the other side, causing a bow to be created. Make sure to fluff out the bow piece itself so it becomes nice and big. And then you're just going to sew a nice little clip on the back of it. Or if you want to, you can actually hot glue these to your shoes. In order for me to make Shinobu's hair clip, I'm actually going to be drafting it on this magazine paper. This is thicker than the paper that I have and it's basically like nice cardstock and it's laminated. I'm going to go ahead and fold this paper in half, making sure that this butterfly is going to be symmetrical. I'm also going to tear it off of the rest of the magazine. So I'm going to be using this marker to slowly sketch out the butterfly design. It has a giant wing on the front part and then a lower antenna that has a little bit sticking out at the bottom. I don't know how else to point it out other than one of those giant foam fingers. I'm going to color it in so you guys can see what it actually looks like. You don't have to do this, but I'm doing this for your guys' sake. Once you're happy with your design, go ahead and cut it out. I'm using a foam sheet for the base of the butterfly. So take your newly cut out butterfly and trace around it on the foam sheet. And cut it out. Using that paper sheet, we're actually going to cut out the inside parts so we know where to keep it white. So we're creating a stencil. Go ahead and create a nice little blob at the top and a little blob down at the bottom wing. Then go ahead and cut those two pieces out. Using that stencil, go ahead and trace it on both sides of that foam butterfly. So you wanna do it a total of four times, two on the back and two on the front. Because I don't have purple paint, I'm going to mix blue and red and a tiny bit of white to make purple. Now I'm just gonna paint on that outside, making sure I don't go inside of that little marks that we just made. I'm gonna take my time and slowly brush all the way around and the edges of the foam. Don't worry about messing up. I accidentally chose white foam as my base. I am still going to paint the inside middle parts white, so it's okay if you have a little hiccup here and there. Make sure to paint the entire front side first and then wait for it to dry and then paint the entire back side purple. Once everything is dry, mix up a small batch of light green paint. I mixed my dark green paint with white and a little bit of yellow this time. So now I'm going to paint small blobs starting with one at the corner being very large, a small dot, and then another big blob. You're gonna follow this kind of pattern all throughout the purple areas and make sure you do this on the front and back sides again. On the bottom tendril, you don't really need to add the purple part where it has the little curly cue. After I've painted all the green onto the butterfly, I'm gonna go back and touch it up. So when I was using the newspaper, it kind of stuck to one of the sides, which isn't that great. So I'm gonna have to touch that up too. So be careful with what your working surfaces. Now with a nice fine brush, I'm using that white paint, again, like I said, and going into those middle parts, making it nice and crisp. Using black puffy paint and a pencil, I'm going to start creating the veins for the wings. Because the reference of the Maid Cafe doesn't really showcase her butterfly clip, I'm going to reference the one from the anime. A lot of this is chalked down to making a lot of Ys and a connecting pieces. Also, I went ahead and did this on the other side before painting. Once I'm happy with my design, I'm going to slowly start piping out black puffy paint. Now it's okay if your puffy paint gets really globby, you kind of want this for the next step after you finish doing all of your lines. If your puffy paint ever gets stuck up, go ahead and use a needle to clean it out. When everything is dry, it should look like this. 
It looks pretty good and I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. So now it's the final step, grabbing some nice blue dimensional paint and some Mod Podge. We're going to clear coat this so it seals all the paint in. So I like pouring my Mod Podge onto my piece first and then using it to spread it out. You can do whatever feels best for you. Just feel comfortable with this project. Squirt out a generous amount of the blue paint at the bottom edge of the white area. Spread it out using the Mod Podge. Try not to press hard. You want this to be thin, but visible. Do this again until you have your desired effect of light blue spread across the white areas. This is a little bit of a tricky technique, but with patience and perseverance, you'll get it. You don't want this to be pure white anymore, but you do want a lot of the white still showing. Go ahead and repeat this step for both in the back sides. You can see the puffy paint made a huge difference in keeping some of the blue paint where it's supposed to be, and that way the white part isn't so pure white. I'm going to use a hair whiff clep so I can add my butterfly to my hair. I sewed a small amount of fabric on the back for extra support. This is why saving scrap fabric is so important. Now I'm going to use E6000 and glue it in place. I'm actually putting this clip in the dead center of where my butterfly is. This is because I want some of the bottom to hang off if I'm going to use a bun, and I want it to be easy accessible for me to put on and not guesstimate. Make sure your clip is open when you're trying to glue it down and let it dry completely before you attempt to close it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really love this outfit. I think the vest is very versatile. I did make it in mind for thinking about other characters and outfits. I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't cover more. I might be able to add like an extra clip to make it come in a little bit more. This way it isn't so open and revealing. Kind of like boom! That's not what we want. Anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to check out some of my other videos here or here. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Comment down below if you have any problems, questions, or if you just want to talk to me. That's cool too. So remember to stay inspired, be creative, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Bye!